What's going on everybody? It's Noah coming to you again, or as many of you know me as Ox. Uh, sharing some insight with my third run of 100 Days Making Comics, where I set apart, set aside as much time as I possibly can to work on my independent comic series, I Never Forgot. Now on to my ninth issue, and uh, you're watching me ink this page from issue 9, uh, it's actually page 11, um, all this is sped up about double time, so um, take that into consideration uh, while I work. Um, you also see this 9 panel grid that I instituted for this album, uh, it, for this issue, sorry about that, uh, and it's becoming the, the real star of this issue. Um, I think that helped me get this issue done in a pretty incredibly fast manner. Um, also helped with the design aspects. Um, keeping everything pretty neat, nice and neat. Um, a good, well, I'd say about half of it is pretty silent, which... Uh, you see, for the most page, part, is this page as well. Um, but there's such cool things that I was able to incorporate with this style. Um, doing this brickwork was a lot of fun. There's a lot of brickwork that I'm really uh, pleased with now that the inking stage is done. Oh, by the way, um, this is going from day 17 to 26. I started inking... Uh, back in the last video, um, I was going to go every eight days, but couldn't help it. Um, pushed for a little harder than I would normally push this weekend and finished up inking the whole thing, uh, on day 26. Those last three days I put in, uh, I want to say 10 hour days, uh, each one of them, and I, I... <laughs> Put it all on the table. I wanted to be done with this um, because my tech pens were running out. Um, my ink was <laughs> not the easiest to work with near the end. Um, but I have a, a just a pile of tech pens that I'm pretty sure I'm going to scrap. Uh, I'm going to give them uh, probably a week to see if they can soak up more ink from the sponge that's inside of them. But for the most part, I think they're they're pretty pretty much toast. Um, I'm going to be taking two days away from working on the actual interior right now. Uh, for the next couple days, I'll be painting, uh, working on the original cover that I had done. Uh, I'm going to rework it a little bit, make the hand a little bit better. Um... I've got to paint the variant covers, the back covers, and the thank you paintings. Um, that'll easily take me two, three days. Um, then I can look at this issue again, really clean it up, make sure everything's as tight as I'd love it to be, uh, make sure the dialogue works well. Um, all the little things, and then kind of erase all the blue that's showing, if red if there's anything there. Um... It really gives that ink a, a few days to soak into the page, so when I do erase, if I have to, um, it'll be latched on the page and then I won't have to touch it up, but I'm sure I will have to. Um, so, issue 9 is going to be 27 pages now. Um, that means I've inked 26 pages. Uh, the first page is always done in the coloring stage and it's kind of an homage to the previous issue's front cover so you kind of know where we're going from you're reminded of the last issue going into the new issue um, this issue is the first time that I'm doing a left page slash page uh, uh, splash um, so there's not going to be anything on the right side so like a true comic I guess you would say um, going into those back covers then. Um, wanted to try it out. Had a couple different ideas. Uh, it was going to be having some final dialogue, but I think I'll leave that to the reader's imagination. 
uh, because I really like this wordless splash that I did for that last page, which is an awesome, awesome way to end the issue, I think. Um, but back to issue nine, the hours that I've put in um, for the inking stage alone, I put in 83 hours, which from the roughs and tighter pencils, those were like 103 hours. So you're looking at right at the end of inking stage being about 200 hours in, which I need you to remember that number because making comics is not easy by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I've hit on this a couple times with the last two videos, but... If you're considering the 100 day challenge, I, I very much think it's in your best interest to do that because you actually get a taste of how hard making comics are. I'm not saying they're easy by any means. I'm not saying they're incredibly difficult, but there is definitely a time commitment you have to put aside. Um, I think I go into each one of these issues and think like, oh, it'd be no big deal because um, I, I can... I'm I'm quicker than I was, but I think reasonably these are about the hours that you're looking at putting into each page and I think if you're doing the 100 day challenge, I think you need to at least set aside an hour's worth of work um because each page took about 3 hours to ink. If you break that up into half hours, you're looking at a sixth of a page just in the inking process. Um, I think that's pretty difficult. I think if you at least break that up into hour stages, um, you can at least get a third of a page done. Uh, I'm not the one that can kind of quit a page once I've started, so there were a couple days that I did um, just from pure exhaustion and pushing myself harder than I have. Um, but for sure, I think the 100-day challenge, if you're thinking about taking it up, should be an hour's worth of work um, that'll give you an even even limit to put in and that'll put a hundred hours into your project and that is half of what I've done so far um, that's double what people are doing normally uh, and this is this is just my own impression like um, I have eight issues under my belt now I have a good idea of how long it takes. Uh, and plus, if you're looking at a page a day for professionals, um, that's pretty reasonable. Uh, you think an hour for roughs, an hour for tighter pencils, a few hours for inks, and a few hours for coloring. Like, that's a pretty reasonable deal. And um, most professionals aren't really doing uh, all the stages of the page. That's pretty much pencils to inks. Um, so probably a couple more hours because I'm sure their pages are a lot more detailed than mine. Um, not saying that this issue isn't very detailed. You can see with this nine panel grid, um, there is plenty, plenty to look at. Um, I also like, you can see in the page details, the little, uh, kind of panel camera tricks that I was doing, like leading the eye. Um, I'm really excited for people to see this issue. Uh, it's kind of a bummer that they're going to get hit with the 8 and 9 back-to-back -back because whoever backed the 8th Kickstarter will be getting the ninth Kickstarter alongside with. Um, and I'm also happy that they're getting that because <sighs> these two issues are some of my best work, but it's also... It almost seems divergent of the previous issues uh, because you're thinking of seven I did all the stages per page daily um, and that was the midway point for this whole issue series so um, looking at these like I'm getting more complex with my work um, <laughs> that seventh issue being such a game changer for how I worked uh, I'm excited for people to see the end of the love arc, um, especially the weight of the last six, seven, eight pages of this issue. Um, that's the ones I did this weekend, and like, I completely thought, forgot the weight that those pages carried, and I'm excited to share them. Um, I think this sets up the last arc perfectly. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting into that even further. 
Um, there's still plenty of work to do with issue nine. Um, and I'm excited to, now that I'm a third of, or a fourth of the way through the challenge, um, it's going to be interesting to see how the rest of the hundred days plays out. Um, I'm hoping to have the coloring stage done by day 40. Um, more than likely it'll be day 50, but, um, if I get all that done, you'll see all the work I put into the rest of the, uh, issue as well. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm super stoked to, uh, throw all this together for sure. Um, going into that, you have a new kind of challenge put forward by the vets of the 100 day challenge. Um, seeing this is my third time doing the 100 day challenge, it's, it's not necessarily a challenge anymore. I know I can sit myself down and like... It has been instrumental because there have been days that I wanted to take off for sure um, that I've been working myself to the bone. But um, the fact that I want to put the work in, the fact that I want to get this issue done as soon as possible, um, the challenge has been there to hold me accountable and, and push myself just a little harder. Um, but with that said, there's a lot of vets of the 100-day challenge that don't find the challenge... A challenge anymore. So they're kind of doing uh, checkups. And we have Josh and Corey that started this whole thing. Um, they're doing a 48, challenge, 48 hour challenge where they kind of discuss what they're doing, what they're working on, uh, goals, risks, all that kind of stuff. And they started this whole thing. I think it's cool seeing these different pairs because with Josh and Corey you have uh, professionals with family. You can see all the work that goes into their their art while doing everything else, doing day jobs. Um, kind of ha just having these little little pockets of space to uh, help with everything else. Uh, the second group is Gaz and Mike and they are they don't have necessarily smaller children. Um, they are kind of the caretakers at home. Um, and they are still working towards major art goals. Uh, Gaz is working on his third issue. Mike is now working on two different comic series, I believe, at this time. Uh, from what I saw from that first video. Uh, he also has a bunch of new uh, videos. If you're looking to get into uh, to co making comics, I highly suggest checking out his channel. He's got a few new um, printer um, comparison videos that he just started a new series. Um, very, very well done reference for a lot of the stuff. Um, I know that was one of the big drawbacks when I started making my comic series is trying to find a printer, what kind of paper to use, like getting samples and all that stuff. And he like collapses all this great information into these videos. So highly suggest checking those out. Watching their channels, paying attention to their challenge. Uh, I know Gaz is going to be uh, pushing Mike quite a bit. Because uh, Gaz is this professional that does character jobs. He is, does cons. He, he is probably one of the people that pushes himself the hardest out of the whole hundreds group. Um, while staying on top of other people's videos and doing everything for that as well. So it's going to be awesome seeing their challenge. I think they're going to do weekly, which is reasonable. Um, with as much work they have on the side, I think uh, every other day would be kind of difficult for them. Uh, and then now, newcomers Chris and Marsh are doing it, and which is crazy because Chris lives in Australia, Marsh here in the U.S., and they somehow have found a way to work it out. Um, and then you have these guys who are semi-professionals, but they have family lives too, and day jobs, and like trying to get this to work. So you have all these different tiers of people, and now I believe uh, me and Jan are going to be throwing our hat into the ring as well. Um, it's great 
because with all these other pairs, um, you see me and Jan, who are basically, we have more, uh, I want to say more necessarily free time than everybody else, but um, we're not as tied down as the others with um, commissions and other work that we have to get done. So, like, we're, we can kind of dedicate almost all our spare time to our projects, which is going to be fun to see our goals and risks and everything else like that. So, looking forward to doing that with Jan. Uh, stay tuned to our channels. Um, I will put links to these dudes down in the comics if I remember, please don't hold me to that because that's eight different people that I have to remember to grab their links for. But I will I will do my best to uh, get all those links for sure. Um, very interested to do with Jan because we've done challenge or we've held each other accountable, and we are continually inspiring others. So I think these pairs, all four different groups, are such vast widespread um, differences amongst all of them that I think it's going to be great to watch all of us four different sets um, figure out how to make this whole art thing work. So pay attention to all our channels, watch them, tune in for the live streams because that's going to be great um, seeing how we all figure this out as we go. Uh, so yeah. Uh, Patreon updates should be coming this week. Uh, I'm going to be uploading a whole cache of my um, books that I have, um, my back issues, my trade, um, and then once I get the video put together for May's sketchbook, I'm going to take apart the whole sketchbook and probably scan in April and May. I might go back as March, but I'm really enjoying the work I'm putting in now. Um getting those details down. Um, so yeah, I'm going to not only make a monthly video now, but I'm also going to be sharing a sketchbook. So if you don't want to watch the video, you can at least uh, check out the sketches I made each month. Uh, I'm going to put those in a small PDF. Uh, probably put them on gun mode for a buck or two. Um, but if you don't want to pay that buck or two, you can just throw chip in from a Patreon and then have that back catalog for checking out at any point. Um, moving on, uh, I think from this stage, I'm not necessarily going to be recording me doing the coloring stage, but I am going to be recording doing sketches for my Kickstarter that I kickstarted last year for issue 8. I know I've talked about this. Uh, they're going to be doing beginning both issue 8 and 9. Um, but with that, it'll be a month. Or it'll be nearly a year since they donated to that Kickstarter. So doing something special for them. Uh, making everybody that um, chipped in the special sketches for them. Just for them. Um... As a way of saying thank you um, for doing all, for putting their trust in me, uh, I think for the next Kickstarter I'm definitely going to have the book completely finished before I launch, um, because that's going to be for the second trade and issue 10, um, so yeah, there's plenty of work ahead of me for that. <laughs> um, but I'm going to be recording these Kickstarter sketches. Uh, doing a sketch for each one of them. Um, not quite sure how I'm going to be doing it. If I'll do like a uh, pencil sketch first and then do a marker sketch from that as well. I'm pretty sure that's how I'm going to do it. And then fold the kind of pencil sketch in with the uh, regular sketch. Um, yeah, along with that, the sketchbook. We are 150 days plus into this new year. Um, how are your art goals coming along? Are they doing well? Um, also in the video, you can see me, uh, getting through this page, jumped ahead a little bit. Um, there are fine details within this page that I don't want to tell you, um, but you'll notice once you get the book in front of you and be like, oh, geez, that's awesome. So, yeah, that's good stuff. Um, but... It's wild to think that this first sketchbook is filled. Um, that's 150 drawings. 
And now we're moving on to the second one. It was so wild because I got to pick new stickers to throw in my sketchbook and all this other good stuff. Um, doing Rumi movies still. Uh, we've gone to a new schedule where it's um, Monday one week, Tuesday the next, and then we're alternating that for uh, the foreseeable future because it, it got a little difficult for Luke because he works one Monday, he doesn't work the next, so he was rushing to get everything watched one week, so I think this alleviates a lot of that stress on him for that. Uh, watched uh, plenty of great movies recently. Um, just saw a drift yesterday with uh, Shane Lee Woodley. Um, kind of sailing across the Pacific. Uh, it's It's an incredibly harsh but beautiful movie Uh, I think all the set design um, the makeup like this is really a well done uh, a well done film and on top of that it's it's based or it is a true story like it's wild to think that all this actually took place Um, but that's all I'm going to say about it you should really check it out I really love how they they layered the storytelling they kind of it's similar to Memento, where they have two different timelines and they uh, stitched them together, like interwoven them, and, it, and it's really well done. I really love how it looked, how it played out. Um, Deadpool two is another recent one. Uh, I really liked how it did done, and uh, we talked about this a few weeks back on Roomies and Movies, and we Luke liked it well enough. I liked it, um, but we were talking about this last night and. He was, uh, or uh, he had made the comment that he was surprised that they didn't use their voice for something. And this goes back to what I'm talking about with the 100 Days of Big Comics. Like, when you get your first issue done, and then you get your second issue done, you're not necessarily looking to rewrite the world. But... Um, once you get that work put in, you see how much work goes into these, you start to realize you can adjust and make it a, uh, better goals for yourself. And I see Deadpool 2 as doing that. Um, they didn't necessarily want to try taking huge chances with it, but at the same time, uh, they were making this blockbuster that kind of had to live up to the original and I think living up to the original was a big task set for it because that first one was so ambitious um I think the second one did a good job of of recreating the magic that was the first one um I also love Domino Domino is such a great character um the kind of quick jabs they did with Liefeld um showing her luck power on screen was incredibly awesome like uh i'm pretty sure i'm going to be doing some uh some fan art of domino for sure from deadpool 2 but uh yeah let me know what you thought of deadpool 2 down in the the, uh comments as well as solo um for the long for the last few years for sure um star wars has been a real thorn in my side i really hated force awakens uh, I loved some of the characters, I loved some of the aspects, but for the most part, having another Death Star trying to blow it up just kind of grinded my gears. Like, with the Deadpool 2 thing, it's easy to see that they had all this rich history, and to do something that strayed from that, kind of taking those chances that they should have, um, to just kind of put a new coat of paint on the same story they've been telling was kind of a letdown for me for sure. Um, but I I love Ray. I love, uh, Poe and I love a John Boyega's character, Finn. Uh, I, I, I love the characters that are in it. I just think the storytelling is kind of lazy, which leads into the last Jedi. The last Jedi, I thought I wasn't on board the first time, but it gets better every time I see it. Um, I love the chances they took with it. Uh, the way that it divided culture 
for the Star Wars fans was such a crazy thing to witness these last few months for sure. Um, Rogue One didn't didn't hit me and almost detracted away from how badass Darth Vader was because we've known this character for 30 years and a 10 second clip of him just actually doing some lightsaber shit is the best we've ever seen him. So, it, it, I don't know. Rogue One just I did not like. So, I went into Solo with moderately low expectations. Um, Han Solo is probably one of my favorite characters in the Star Wars universe. So, I did have some pretty decent expectations. But, um, Solo blew it out the water for me. Uh, I loved what they did with it. it. It kind of just filled out his backstory. We didn't necessarily need it, but seeing this ruffian <laughs> outlaw for the most part and and seeing what I believed this character was for so many years and seeing his his backstory. There's a lot of great great uh scenes and whatnot. I don't want to go into spoilers in case you haven't seen it yet, but um if you have seen it, want to see more of my thoughts, you can check out one of the latest Rumi's End Movies podcasts here on the channel. But yeah, I loved I loved everything they did with it. Um, I know the actor signed on for three different movies. I don't know if they're doing a trilogy of his, or if he's just signed on for um, other movies like Lando, and I think they greenlit an Obi-Wan Maybe both. I can't remember which one they greenlit, but um, yeah, I'm super excited for Star Wars all over again. Just because the everything that took place in Solo and and filling out the world that we already knew existed, um, it was a fun trip. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next one for sure. Um, still not knowing anything about um, the ninth Star Wars movie is kind of weird, um, but I think it's in decent hands with J.J. I'm still not a huge fan of J.J. Abrams, but, you know, I, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt this time. Um, and then, uh, working on trades. I, I got a handful of new trades, so I'm definitely going to be pushing myself to get back to reading, because I have a pretty decent stack of, uh, trades that I gotta read through. Um, also got talking about um, the low story. Um, one of my friends on Twitter uh, threw out the question to uh, who would be the perfect casting. And uh, I would love to see Low done because I think Low is such an inspirational comic book. And I'm still not caught up on it. <laughs> Low is one of those stories that is so rich to me that. I don't want to pressure it into being more than it needs to. So it's there when I need to read it. Um, I have been rereading it, and then I'll reread it, and then add another trade to it. So I'm going to reread it now, and then go on to the third trade. I believe there's four trades right now. It should be back in the fall. I think Remender has been talking about it on Twitter. Um, Greg Tweechies art is some of the best. Uh, it's something I inspire to. He's got a very painterly style that he does his artwork with. Um, yeah, if you haven't checked out Low, I have a video on this channel. Um, it's in my playlist of comics reviews and whatnot. Uh, definitely check that out. Uh, I'll probably be doing another one for this second trade once I get reread through that. Um, yeah, Lowe's an incredible story because it's this story of hope and thinking about hope in different ways that I never necessarily incorporated. Um, it's such such a fantastic way to look at something that you knew was around but you never necessarily gave it the benefit of the doubt. Um, so this perfect casting... Uh, I figured Joel, which would be the father of this whole family, um, as Idris Elba would be perfect. Um, I need to see Idris Elba 
and many, many more things. So it only makes sense that he would be doing that. Um, for the his wife, Stell, uh, I have as Okia. Uh, Danny Grand, I think is her name. Uh, she played Okia in uh, Black Panther and Infinity War. Uh, she's an incredible actress. She also plays Michonne on The Walking Dead. Um, for her daughters, I had Zendaya and... Oh, who was the other one? Um, crap, now I can't think. Uh, but Zendaya was the one daughter that is in the second trade. Has a girlfriend who loves art in a society that art isn't prevalent. Um, and I thought her girlfriend would be awesomely played by Lupita. Um, having their brother played by Winston Duke would be incredible. And then I think Roln, the bad bad guy of the series, played by uh, Danny Yen, would be incredible. Um, such a diverse um, grouping of people. I think that would be incredible to see them take on this story of hope. Um because I think they could really do it justice. And it'd be incredible seeing this underwater world come to life, for sure. So, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much going to do it for now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching me ink this page. Um, yeah, coming up you'll be seeing, or uh, near the end of this video, you saw me break out the ink and uh, actually throw in some ink with the paintbrush. So uh, I'll catch you later next week sometime for uh, the next 100-day catch-up video. But I hope you're all doing well. Your projects are going awesome. And uh, we'll check in with you soon. Later.